an iPhone SE, you probably won't know the difference if you're showing it to somebody. But the iPhone SE is a fully revamped phone. This has an A9 processor, 12 megapixel camera, live photo. It does not have 3D touch. So if you do that, nothing is going to pop up. But this is pretty affordable for an iPhone at $399 for 16 gigs. $499 gets you 64, however. And this is basically kind of like a shrunken down iPhone 6S in an older size. I'll fit with different cases from the past and will fit in your hand. Some people like that. And it's going to be available very soon. Uh, maybe people prefer this size. Maybe people like a larger size. But this is basically like three different choices, similar processors. That's the iPhone SE. Quick hands on. This is a 9.7 inch iPad Pro. It was just announced here. And if you saw last year's iPad Pro that had pencil support and new smart keyboard connectors, this is in that 9.7 inch size. It starts at 599 for 32 gigs. But this thing goes all the way up to 256 gigabytes of storage. Improved screen, better speakers, uh, faster processors. So this thing is meant to be a totally revamped iPad and a better camera than was on the 12.9 inch Pro. We're going to take a look a lot more at this coming up, um, but that's our very first peek at the iPad Pro, and here's the keyboard. Uh, smaller keyboard, but still got pretty good key space, and should be able to pair with a lot of accessories that will give this a little more versatility. There's Pencil, there's iPad Pro, 9.7 inch, stay tuned for more. Here's what's new in iOS 9.3. So first off is a brand new feature called Night Shift. This is available under the display and brightness section in settings and it's very similar to an app called Flux. What it does is shift the color of the screen to a warmer tone. There have been studies that suggest that the blue tone of our devices can lead to difficulty sleeping, but with this tool it shifts the color to have less impact on your circadian rhythm. And in turn, this should hopefully make it easier to sleep. This can all be adjusted manually so you can choose the exact tone that you want and you can also set it to be on a schedule so that it just comes on automatically and you don't have to think about it. There are also some other features and additions to some existing apps. Now when you're on the home screen there are a few new 3D touch quick actions that work with the stock apps. Now on the compass you can now quickly launch the level or just go to the compass and on the health app you can quickly launch the dashboard or show your medical ID. And on the weather app you can get quick access to your favorite locations that you have set or set a new one. And on the settings icon you can now finally have quick actions and go to Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, your battery or right from the icon. There's also been some changes to the quick actions for the iTunes and App Store. There's an update all action and a purchase action for the App Store and a view downloads and purchased action for the iTunes Store. Now the health app has also been tweaked a bit to make it easier to see move, exercise, and stand data. And in some categories of the app, there's a new menu that helps you find apps that help you track data. In Apple News, there's a new improved algorithm that offers better articles in the For You section, so hopefully there's going to be some better content in there. And there's also a new landscape mode and support for inline video playback, so you don't have to be taken out of the content. CarPlay's also been updated a bit to include some new features like a For You section in Apple Music and a nearby feature in Maps to help you discover some points of interest right within the CarPlay interface, similar to how you do it on your iPhone but right there in the CarPlay interface so you don't have to pick up your phone. In the Wallet app, now there's an option to go to the app that a specific card or pass is attributed to. So if you need to go to the full app for some reason, if you have like a credit card or something, you could do that right from the pass. Instead of having to exit and then go find the other app and open that up, you can just do it right from Wallet and it just makes it much easier and faster. Now on the iPhone 6s and 6s Plus, one of the new features is live photos. There's an option to export a still image from that live photo. So if you want to share it or send it out, you can do that with the full res image but still have a live photo option so you can have the best of both worlds now. There's also an update for the Apple Watch. Currently, you can only have one Apple Watch paired with one iPhone, but with 9.3 and watchOS 2.2, which was also released today, you can now pair multiple Apple Watches to one iPhone. For some people, a much welcome change. Now next up is in Notes. Apple has been focusing a lot on their Notes app in the last few releases, and with 9.3, there's now the ability to password protect your Notes and use Touch ID to access them. A lot of users put sensitive materials in their Notes because it's one of the only places to write down and store things, so being able to have those all protected is a great thing to see. There's also some other minor changes like how you can view the notes so you can sort them differently by date or alphabetically. Now lastly is for education. There's a few new additions that make it easier for students and schools to use iOS devices. 
There's a new classroom app and Apple School Manager feature and new managed Apple IDs that are signed by the school for each student. But there's also a new shared iPad for students and this allows for multiple accounts on one iPad. So once students can take the iPad, sign in, and have all of their information there, then they can hand it to a different student, they will sign in, and all of their information will be there. Multiple users on an iPad. It's pretty interesting. So that's what to expect when you update to iOS 9.3. There's quite a few new features and improvements, and be sure to let us know down in the comments which one is your favorite. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the news from Apple, and you'll see when the new videos are out. And also, visit MacRumors.com for more. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Mac.